Beat makes homework submission easier, also made uh, learning borderless. Even during the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without any hiccups. Oh, I, I think app, uh, this uh, Beep is a good uh, app. It bring everything, you know, uh, all in one, it's uh, uh, learning together and uh, it's very useful, you know, to the kids. Especially, you know, I can see from uh, Krista, uh, she really useful it, you know, uh, using it, and uh, especially, you know, every time she come back home, then she will, you know, go into the P lesson, and then it will really help her, you know, to encourage. The younger one uh, still, you know, new to the, <laughs> so uh, it, it takes a while, you know, but I can see the improvement from her as well. I made the right decision because actually this was all along what I wanted for my kids. I find IB education in fact is good for most children. I want them to enjoy school, you know, enjoy school is enjoy learning. Then I said yes, IB is for my kids. There was a great change in the way they learn and behave. My kids love to come to school. They every day, every day morning, I got no problem waking them up. They're all ready for school. They love to come to school. They love to meet the parents, uh, the teachers. Yeah, they actually love to uh, talk because I think here yeah, the teachers and teachers and kids they bond together. Yeah, yeah, and also because of the class size, which is I think uh, a small size, so they have really good bonding. You know, so it's more of their second home year. I'm glad you know I have sent them you know to the. Fairview International School, and you know, it was. Uh, I must say that this was actually a very great uh, and also a very ex uh, exper experiential, you know, uh, learning in Subang Fairview. 从他小学他不会讲英语在家里他也没有跟我们沟通语他自从他来了国际学校我们就可以从中可以看得到就算他跟朋友沟通或者我们要出外买东西也是有遇到销售员还是或者谁用英语的我的孩子他都会自动用英
many people are not very uh, sure about what this kind of more open style of learning is like. I think that is what most students today they lack. They want the easy way out, right? More, okay, I memorize, okay, and that is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Whereas IB is something that you need to go deeper, right? You need to learn. It's more skills, right? It's not just what you read from books. Uh, it's more of um, finding out more. It's just not one answer. It's not going to be one answer. You can have multiple different answers to one thing. So there's probably, if there's, uh, it's just not one solution to a problem. There can be different ways. So this is what IB encourages. That means you just don't think one way. You, there's many other ways that you can do something. Mommy and Daddy is very proud of you. Just, you know, head on. Mommy is very proud of you. You can learn from the Fayview, the Fayview, the Fayview, the Fayview, the Fayview, the Fayview, the Fayview. Mommy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself to do things that are out of your comfort zone. Hi, I'm Ahnaf Rahman and I'm an IBDP student at Fairview International School. Um, well, before selecting a pre-university course, I felt like I was an academically inclined person. So I wanted to choose a, a pre-university course that would challenge me. That is why I felt so attracted to the IBDP program because uh, other than the six subjects that we study, there are so many extracurricular opportunities uh, which I felt would truly prepare me as a holistic and versatile learner. So um, one of the main benefits of doing IBDP in Fairview is that the cohort size is rather small and that helped me uh, establish special relationships with my teachers and my friends. So it was, it was a very comforting experience, almost like a family. And also uh, the transition from MYP to DP was something that was really looked after. Uh, from as early as M3, when I was choosing my MYP subjects, uh, I was in touch with the DP coordinator who guided me a lot. So the support uh, from the, the coordinators and teachers really made the transition from MYP to DP very smooth. All pre-university programs will give us the, the knowledge to a certain extent, but the skills that I've developed during this time is some, are things that are special to me. So in particular, uh, the social skills, uh, is some social skills is very important to me. Um, for example, through the Duke of Edinburgh program or my CAS projects, I was able to uh, transfer and extend my learning beyond the classroom. And that made me, I feel it made me a more versatile and, and a more holistic learner. After IBDP, I intend to pursue a Bachelor of Business Administration degree at the University of Toronto in Canada, where I plan to specialize in management and IT. Uh, I was awarded the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship by the University of Toronto, which is a full scholarship that covers uh, all tuition, accommodation, food, and other expenses for four years. Uh, this was a rather competitive scholarship with an acceptance rate of just uh, 2%, so it's a really proud achievement for my family and I as I'm the first ever student from Fairview and the second ever student from my home country of Bangladesh to achieve this award. The scholarship requires students to have outstanding academic achievement, but a perk of the scholarship is that not everyone is eligible. You need to be nominated by your school first, and each school can only nominate one student each year. So I was competing with the top students around the world. So instead of academics, I feel what differentiated me from all other applicants was my extracurriculars. So firstly, I spoke about the CAS project that I did during my time in IBDP. Uh, this was a youth volunteerism platform that I developed called Fair Care, which basically connects almost 500 students uh, from Fairview to over 40 NGOs across Malaysia to conduct meaningful uh, service and action activities. Uh, other than that, the scholarship also requires students to have uh, leadership experience. So for that, I talked about 
uh, my time as the president of the student council and my experience leading this organization during the pandemic. This room has a lot of nice things, like a place where you can rest and chit chat with your friends. Welcome to our flower board. So in, on this flower board, we have uh, each and every single student that is currently studying in various area. BEAT makes homework submission easier, also made uh, learning borderless. Even during the lockdown, a transition from physical to online was really smooth without any hiccups. Oh, I, I think app, uh, this uh, BEAT is a good uh, app. It brings everything, you know, uh, all in one. It's uh, uh, learning together and uh, it's very useful, you know, to the kids. Especially, you know, I can see from uh, Krista, uh, she really useful it, you know, uh, using it, and uh, especially, you know, every time she come back home, then she will, you know, go into the P lesson, and then it will really help her, you know, to encourage. The younger one uh, still, you know, new to the, <laughs> so uh, it, it takes a while, you know, but I can see the improvement from her as well. I made the right decision because actually this was all along what I wanted for my kids. I find IB education in fact is good for most children. I want them to enjoy school, you know, enjoy school is enjoy learning. Then I said yes, IB is for my kids. There was a great change in the way they learn and behave. My kids love to come to school. They every time every day morning I got no problem waking them up. They're all ready for school. They love to come to school. They love to meet the parents, uh, the teachers. Yeah, they actually love to uh, talk because I think here the teachers and teachers and kids they bond together. Yeah, yeah. And also because of the class size, which is I think uh, small size, so they have really good bonding. You know, so it's more of their second home year. I'm glad you know I have sent them you know to the. Fairview International School, and you know, it was. Uh, I must say that this was actually a very great uh, and also a very uh, exper experiential, you know, uh, learning in Subang Fairview. From his childhood, he didn't speak English. In his home, he didn't 
他自从他来了国际学校，我们就可以从中可以看得到，就算他跟朋友沟通，或者我们要出外买东西，也是有遇到销售员还是或者谁呃用英语的，我的孩子他都会呃自动用英语去跟他们沟通这样。所以当我们看到的时候，我们都会哎哇很开心，我们就会觉得哎不错一下哦，我们的孩子当人家用英语来讲的时候，我们的孩子他也会用英语来表达为人家这样子。So I think. Um, this kind of learning it makes it very um, interesting for the child because they can see how their learning applies immediately and directly to the real world. Uh, we also had a chat with the chairman, so he said his idea is not on money but more in terms of the education side. So I think uh, it's it's a well balanced from that angle point of view that you get a quality education at an affordable price for parents as well. The syllabus in IV is such that you are exposed to different culture, different kinds of the community when they are learning different units of inquiry. In this part of Asia, a lot of our legacy education system is the British system. We are used to it. We are used to the ICGSC style of learning. Last time people used to have the O levels, A levels. It's a kind of more, uh, in a way, it's kind of didactic. Uh, it's like the teacher teaches and you learn and then you learn according to textbooks and you have to follow the syllabus and you take exams based on the syllabus. So many people are not very uh, sure about what this kind of more open style of learning is like. I think that is what most students today they lack. They want the easy way out, right? More, okay, I memorize, okay, and that is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Whereas IB is something that you need to go deeper, right? You need to learn. It's more skills, right? It's not just what you read from books. Uh, it's more of um, finding out more. It's just not one answer. It's not going to be one answer. You can have multiple different answers to one thing. So there's probably, if there's, uh, it's just not one solution to a problem. There can be different ways. So this is what IB encourages. That means you just don't think one way. You, there's many other ways that you can do something. Mummy and Daddy is very proud of you. And just you know, carry on. Mummy, very very proud that you can in Fairview, this Fairview Special Education Center, you can learn a lot of things. Mummy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself. Mummy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself. Mummy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself. Mummy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself. Mummy is very proud of you this term because you really challenge yourself. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Breakthrough Series. We are honored to have you here. My name is Miss Uma, teacher and counselor of Fairview International School, Subang Jaya. I will be your MC for today's event, together with Miss T, our Subang Jaya principal, Miss Cynthia, our Subang Jaya coordinator, and acting campus head. But that's not all. We will also like to welcome other Fairview campus leaders too. Epo campus, we have Pro Principal Professor Gopi with his MYPC, Miss Vignesh. From the Penang campus, we have Principal Miss Anne with her MYPC, Miss Ishwari. From the Johor Bahru campus, we have Principal Paul and his MYP coordinator, Mr. Adrian. And from the Kuala Lumpur campus, we have the principal, Dr. Vincent, with his assistant principal, Dr. Evan, and their MYP coordinator, Miss Siti. Today's talk is brought to you by Fairview International School under our Breakthrough Series. Before we begin, I would like to explain about our meeting ethic. First, we join the meeting. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us. Second, please mute your microphone to eliminate background noises, electronic alerts, and other irritants. Thirdly, please pay attention to the presenters. Next, should you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and our team will address them immediately. Fifth, and lastly, when your name is called, you are welcome to unmute and begin sharing. 
We would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today, following and observing the meeting attic. For your information, this session is going live on YouTube right now. So special shout out to the YouTube viewers. We hope that this will give you a great breakthrough experience. Thank you so much for joining us in today's session. We are proud to feature our young researchers of Fairview International School who are courageously stepping up and stepping forward to share their research. Today's animation, ladies and gentlemen, is on, today's sharing, ladies and gentlemen, is on animation. The talk will cover topics regarding the history of animation, the skills required and involved, and the materials needed to make an animation. They will also conduct a live demo on how to make an animatic. So please join me to welcome our presenters, Lim Keljin and Oi Judy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, teachers and parents, welcome to Fabio's Breakthrough Talk. My name is Lim Kaojin, and I am a MYP4 student from Fabio Subang Jaya. Some of you may know me as the podcast guy from a previous Breakthrough Talk. Regardless, it is indeed great to be back, and oh, trust me, I have just as much to share as the last time. Now, as a podcaster, I create content on my YouTube channel. But besides creating content, I enjoy watching content too. And one of my most favorite genres is animation, like cartoons, Disney movies, and so on. Animation brings fiction to life. And it is a great way to wow the audience with amazing visual world building. I was always fascinated by the amazing scenery of animation as well as the sometimes comedic and sometimes realistic movements of the characters. All of them truly made up my childhood, and I am pretty sure they did for all of us here as well. But guys, have you ever wondered what exactly is an animation? Any ideas on how would you define it? If you have, please type them in the chat below. Right, let's see if there's uh, any answers in the chat. Ah, Miss India says cartoon. Yes, uh, when I was a child, I remember I used to watch cartoons on like on the Disney channels. Yeah, I remember there was Disney XD and Disney, Disney channels, which was filled with a lot of cartoons. Anime, yes. Um, I'm, I am know all of us here uh, love anime. I personally have watched like Naruto and One Punch Man. <laughs> Like uh, one of my favorite animes. Judy, do you know of any animes? I know many animes. I like Mob Psycho's animation. It's very smooth. And it um instead of using 3D animation, they actually use 2, 2D animation, which I find much more interesting. Gives a more nicer style. Right. Now that sure is interesting. Well, you know, about the definition of animation, I had the same question too. So I worked with Mr. Google to find out, and apparently, here is the definition of it. Animation is the technique of photographing successive drawings or positions of puppets or models to create an illusion of movement when the film is shown as a sequence. So in simple words, it is an illusion that makes people think that drawings puppets or models are moving. Well, to have an even better understanding of it, I think it is important for us to look back into the past of animation. So without further ado, let us dive into the interesting history of animation. Are you ready guys? If you are, please give me a thumbs up in the chat. Right, I think we are all ready. Okay, let's move on. So, one of the earliest instances of animation that popped up in human history are from ancient cave paintings that could be dated back to the Paleolithic era of humanity, which is also known as the Stone Age. This era started around 2.5 million years ago and ended around 30,000 BCE ago. 
During this era, uh, humans were still using basic stone and bone tools, such as crude stone axes for hunting wild animals for food. Because the humans of that era were only simple hunter-gatherers that lived in small huts and caves. So it is indeed baffling to see that the power of animation was first, was first unlocked by these simple human beings. As it turns out, these ancient humans made cave paintings, as mentioned before. And as seen on the left image, they were mainly about the animals they encountered, such as wild oxes. First, the images will be drawn overlaying one another, with each image having slight variations in them. Let's say the positions of the legs. But it should be noted that all of the images are still distinguishable from each other. Then the caveman would hold a flickering light of fire in front of the painting, which gives it the illusion that the animal is running, thus creating the first instance of animation. So cool. Another early instance of animation could be found on an ancient pottery bowl that could be dated all the way back to 3000 BC ago. It was found in the burnt city of Iran, which is an archaeological site that is home to many Bronze Age settlements. With the Bronze Age being an era where humans started to use metal bronze tools and started to build early civilizations. So what is interesting is that around the bowl was a sequence of images right, of a goat, each of them slightly different from each other. And as we can see from the GIF on the right, if those images are played in quick succession, we get an animation that shows a goat leaping at a tree. All right, enough about ancient times and let's move on to the current era where we shall now talk about the first machines of animation. And it all starts with the invention of the Magic Lantern in 1659, which is 364 years ago. And it was invented by Christian Hogans, who was a Dutch scientist. How this machine would work is that a fire source will be placed in the machine and the light from it will be reflected by a concave mirror which directs the light through a light condenser and through the machine. Later, glass lights with painted pictures on it will be placed in the machine and they will be located in front of the fire source, thus allowing images to be projected. And the usage of many numbers of glass slides will allow motion to be displayed. As such, we may say that it is a very early version of a projector. And the fact that this existed 300 years ago is just so amazing. Right, guys? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I can see Kathy agrees with me. And of course, Miss Umar as well thinks that it's very really amazing. Well, moving on. The next machine is the Fenechistoscope, which, which is a toy that was invented by Belgian physicist Joseph Plateau, and it was invented in around 1833. The toy has a disc that has many images around it, all of them being slight variations of an original image. And above each image are little slits as well. So to play with this toy, a person will walk to a mirror and spin the disc while uh, looking through the slits. And what is shown in the mirror will be a rapid succession of set images, which gives the illusion of animation. A good example of how it would look like could be seen on the right side of the slide. This toy is crucial to the development of animation as it is the first device to display continuous motion which is very amazing considering this invention is around 190 years old. Moving on, we have another invention that was invented in 1833, and it is called the Zoetrope, which was invented by William George Horner. It consisted a drum on a stick, and inside the drum will be a set of steel images with, again, slight variations from each other. To play with this toy, a person will simply spin the slit quickly and therefore the drum, and then look through the slits beside it. 
When done correctly, the rapidly changing images will trick the mind into thinking that there is motion, thus making it one of the earliest toys to be able to display animation too. This toy is very important in terms of animation history because the technique used here to create animation is still being used to this day in other things such as GIFs and video display technologies. And that is just absolutely crazy to think about. Then 44 years later, after the zoetrope, came the praxinoscope, which was invented in 1877 by Emile Reynaud in France. It basically, it, is, it was basically the successor to the zoetrope and quite similar to it too, as you can see from the design. The way it works is that, well, uh, the way it works is exactly as, as, as it's exactly the same as the zoetrope with the only difference is that the praxinoscope has mirrors in the middle to reflect the rapidly spinning images so that the viewer could be able to easily see them. Once again, the rapidly changing images will trick and confuse the brain into merging the images, thus creating the illusion of animation on the mirror, which this time was easier to see when compared to looking through tiny slits while the mirror also allowed the device to be able to produce clearer images, which was a huge improvement at the time. Now, I wonder, have you ever owned any of these toys before? If you have, please do share your experience in the chat. All right, Judy says no. Personally, I also don't have any of these toys, unfortunately. But uh, I'm. Ah, Miss Uma says uh, she remembers a musical toy. Okay. So maybe you used to have one. Well, that's interesting. Well, I think let's move on, shall we? Continuing on, we shall then jump straight into traditional animation with films with the very first one of its kind being Fontas Mogori. This film was made in 1908 by French cartoonist Emile Cor, And to create it, Emile had to hand draw 700 different images on paper, each of them varying slightly from each other. Then the 700 drawings had to be shot onto negative film, which are the old strips that contain pictures as shown in the slide. And it was this that gave the picture, sorry, it was, this, it was this that gave the film a blackboard look. Although so much work and effort was put into this film, it only had a total runtime of two minutes when the negative film was ran through one of those old movie projectors, which is absolutely crazy when you think about. And it just goes to show that, it just goes to show how much effort it actually takes to make animation. Regardless, this film still made animation history as it was the first ever fully animated cartoon. Moving forward, we have the 1914 film of Gertie the Dinosaur, which was made by Vincent McKay, an American cartoonist. To make this animation, McKay's colleague, who was Fitz Simmons, first traced the background of the film on rice paper. Then McKay did all the drawings of Gertie by hand, all 10,000 drawings, in fact. I don't know about you, but my hand would have been gone by then. <laughs> well, anyways, the drawings from McKay were then inked onto the rice paper and mounted onto cardboard. The process allowed the cardboard to be placed onto a primitive machine that allowed McKay to check his film and later finalize it for release. The entire film was 12 minutes long, and it was the first animated film to have character development, where Gertie the dinosaur could be seen interacting with its surroundings with gestures. Oh, and it was the first animated film to include animation and live action as well. Now, on to an animation classic. We have Steamboat, really, with its main character, Mickey Mouse. Miska, Bushka, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> well, this film was made in 1928 by none other than the legendary animator 
Walt Disney, the man that gave us Disney Studios. To make this film, the animators at Disney Studios have to hand draw all images first. And here is what makes this film special. This film actually used a click track during production, with a click track being a series of audio cues used to synchronize these musicians. Uh, sorry, yeah, with a, used to synchronize sound recordings. Yeah. The use of a click track allowed the musicians and sound production crew to keep on beat and synchronize their sounds with Mickey's movements thus making this the first animated film to have matching sound, which is absolutely amazing for the time. Furthermore, the entire film was eight minutes long and it had 60 frames or individual images per second. So you can only imagine how many animators it took to make this film. Luckily, this film was a commercial success and everybody loved it in the end. Another animation classic produced by Walt Disney, again, is the 1937 film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Has anybody seen this film before? If you have, please tell us about it in the chat. Okay, Judy says no again, but ah, Miss Cynthia, you have watched it before, yeah. I personally have also watched it before. It is a great film. Ah, Singran, my friend, also says that she has watched it before. Well, yeah, it's a funny film, but with dark themes as well. But um, the plot is, I remember, very heartwarming. Ah, Isaac says that this brings me flashbacks of my childhood. Ah, yes, it sure does. It sure does. I remember uh, whenever I watch, I, I mean, whenever I see this poster or like watch a clips, watch a few clips of this film. The different uh, elements in the back. scene were separated according to their varying distances from um, the viewer. Miss, this miss, put miss. the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative uh, sorry, speed miss, with which miss, each miss. individual part of it moves to or away from the camera. But the, the different moon elements in the scene were separated stiff. according Here to their very distant camera from the crew viewer. preparing to shoot that scene. This put the moon on okay, a plane that we are having farthest some away from the camera. The planes for that scene. But our original picture Each broke down, down in this part manner, of the background, painted in oil on glass. All right. Well, uh, they tried to get the slides back on again, uh, this time properly. Uh, let's see what other answers you have. Ah uh, yes, so as I was saying, uh, yeah, whenever I see a few clips from this uh, film, it brings me back to my old childhood days where I sit at my grandma's sofa and just basically binge watch shows. And one of the what one of the shows that I binged was basically this Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Ah, uh, good days, good days. The I never actually. Oh, sorry, I never actually watched it. Ah uh, yeah, I see. Any reason for that, or did you were you just not able to find the film? Um. Not sure. I think I was mostly more interested with playing dolls. You might be thinking that it looks movies. as flat as the old. I see. What about you, uh, Kenshin? Uh, uh, well, uh, is the slide ready yet? No, it's not. Well, ah, uh, well, but hey, Judy, your teacher has answered those. Uh, oh. Miss Lavinia said she says same. I never watched it before, so oh. uh, yeah, I think that is nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have someone to relate to. Okay. Well, let's move on first, shall we? All right. Uh, this film was the first feature length film to use cell animation during production. Cell animation is a type of hand drawn animation where artists transfer their sketches onto transparent sheets of plastic called cells, hence the name. Animators will draw the outline of their character in front of the plastic sheet and use cell paint to paint the back of the plastic sheet according to the outline. This gives the character a more standout appearance. Once all plastic sheets with drawings are done, then they will be placed in front of a background and be photographed individually. When those photographs or frames are placed in sequence, they will give the illusion of motion, thus creating animation. It was this technique that allowed Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to be the first fully colored animated film with sound. 
Furthermore, another newly developed animation technique by Disney at the time was the multi-plane camera. I will explain it to you, but I think the video above would do a better job. So let's watch it, shall we? The different elements in the scene were separated according to their varying distances from the viewer. This put the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative speed with which each individual part of it moves to or away from the camera. But the moon remains absolutely still. Here we see the multiplane camera crew preparing to shoot that scene. Here are the planes for that scene each with its own separate part of the background painted in oil on glass. In our frame-by-frame -frame method of photographing a cartoon scene, the feeling of depth is not actually too evident when the scene is under the camera. You might be thinking that it looks as flat as the old-fashioned type of cartoon background. In fact, it does while it holds still. The trick of the multiplane camera is movement. So, the purpose of the multi-plane camera was to create depth and parallax in their background and frame. And this was incorporated into Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. With all this effort and new innovation, the wonder the film was a big success as well. All right, enough about Disney. And let's move on to another beloved animation studio, which is Pixar Studios. This studio shocked the world when it released the film Toy Story in 1995. This film was the first feature length film to be completely animated using computer generated imagery, better known as CGI, making it the first modern animation as well. In total, Pixar utilized 117 computers rendering at the same time for 24 seven in order to fully render the film. They even had to create their own software to render it, which is called RenderMan. This just, this just goes to show how much resources it actually takes to make modern animation using computers. But all of this, along with its heartwarming plot, made the film really special and intriguing, which caused it to become very popular and allowed it to make up our good childhood memories. Right, guys? Miss Uma says, this movie made me cry. Well, as a child, when I watched this, I wasn't quite aware of like what the whole plot was. But after watching it again, yeah, it was indeed quite emotional and quite heartwarming. So yeah, I agree. It will probably make me cry as well if I do watch it again. How about you, Judy? I never watched Toy Story either. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay, okay. Ah, yes, Kathy. Kathy says that it is a great movie. Ah, she. She says that uh, watch it too many times because of, cause of uh, Little Brother, but it's a great movie. Yes. Yes, I, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> okay, it seems that most of you here do know about the movie. That's good. Okay. Lastly, uh, these days, CGI has advanced a lot when compared to last time. Um, Take Soul from example, which was released by Pixar in 2020. From the GIF above, we can see that uh, animators can now animate the movements of characters in a highly realistic manner as proven by the finger movements of the character. While the CGI allows them to be able to easily put the character into any magical setting that they want, thus making the film even more immersive and interesting to watch. It should also be noted that another major improvement will be the graphics too. As we can see that the characters and objects in Soul are much more defined and clear when compared to the ones in the first Toy Story film. This just really goes to show how far we, the human species, has developed animation from old cave drawings to now having clear and smooth motion for characters as well as HD graphics. All right, and that will be it for the history of animation. I hope you learned a lot from that session, but let's get into the main point, shall we? I understand that you guys didn't just come here simply to learn history. I mean, come on, this is animation. You are supposed to learn how to animate too. However, 
I could not animate even if my life depended on it. So today, I have welcomed a good friend of mine onto the talk. She is an amazing animator and is definitely suited to teach all of you in this field. So without further ado, Judy, take it away. All right, thanks, Kaljun. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to my section of Fabulous Break 2 Talk. My name is Judy, and today I'll teach you how to animate. Woo! It'll be a long one, so sit back, relax, maybe grab a few snacks, and enjoy the ride. As I'm sure most of you have realized, yes, I'm an artist. I've been drawing for about seven years and started around when I was nine or eight, and now I'm 16 as of this year. So yeah, it's been quite a while. Anyways, here's some, some of what I consider some of my best pieces. I remembered my first drawing was of a Minecraft YouTuber called Dan TDM. I'm sure if actually most of you have known of him. It's sort of as something to pass the time that it gradually turned into a creative outlet for me. And I'm really glad that it did, as it helps me relax and have fun. Then one day, I discovered that people could actually make their drawings move. So after watching a couple of tutorials, I downloaded a few apps and started animating. Here are some of the animatics I've made. I hope you find them enjoyable to watch and inspiring. Now, enough of the past. Let's, I would actually like to show you how to animate those animatics. So onto the process of animation creation. If you're excited, Give a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, thumbs up from here, Judy. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I see many people are quite supportive of me. Oh, thank you, Kathy. All right. Let's first start off with what exactly is an animatic? In simple terms and in my own definition, an animatic is what is essentially is a rough sketch of an animation. It is used to define the timing, background, and movements of the characters. This means that the animation and drawings featured within the animatics are usually rough and sketchy and aren't usually uh, smooth, but uh, some are also can be done in grayscale. Some also have colored sections to indicate shadows, though that's not always the case as animatics can be defined smooth and clean. An example can be seen in the video in the slide. All right, now before we get to actually learning how to animate, Let's have a few disclaimers. One, I'm not actually a professional, I'm not actually a professional artist or animator. In fact, I would consider myself a very amateur artist that is still trying to learn. But hey, it's fine. Let's learn together. Number two, you have to have some sort of art experience to start. At least learn how to draw stick figures. They'll make the whole process much more easier. Number three, try to learn the principles of animations beforehand. This is the equivalent of learning anatomy first before drawing in a very stylish manner. I recommend you all this video on this slide right here, as it covers all 12 principles of animation. This will give you the basics on what to do and what not to do, as well as ways to create a more nicer and defined, as well as a, way, sorry, as well as a method to create a more nicer and defined animation slash animatic. Number four, this tutorial is mostly based on animation slash drawing software, Procreate. So if you're using another drawing software or animation software, some of the information I'm about to say may not be applicable. All right, now we have that out of the way. Let's move on to step one. Hey guys, so I decided. Oh. All right. So uh, first things first, one, number one, let's get an idea. Let's get a work of inspiration. So first, get an idea of what you want to animate. Now, I recommend you all to start off with something small and simple, especially if you're a beginner. That's will make your life much more easier. As well as the fact that if you do start off with something more complicated and detailed, keep in mind that you have to keep the consistency and details within each individual frame for each individual drawing. 
And also you have to keep in mind that there will be slight movements. So you have to keep the consistency as well. And it will take a much longer time as you have to draw all the details on each and individual frames. So I would rather you guys start with something much more simple first. For this example, I'll be animating a blinking eye, as in my opinion, it is the most easiest action to draw and animate. If you want to get some inspiration, outside sources like comics and animated movies are a good way to start, as you can just pick out a scene that you really like and draw it. One source of really good inspiration I sometimes use is animation memes. They're not actually memes like the recent meme Among Us. It's not actually a meme. It's more of a repeated format of animation done by mostly unprofessional artists. You can find these animation memes on YouTube by searching up animation memes. Now, everyone, tell me what's your favorite song. I don't know, like, let it go. Yeah, let it go. Let it go from Frozen. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, don't talk about Bruno's also a pretty good Disney song, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, I agree. Although I've never heard of that song, you've never watched Encanto, no, not yet. Yes, <laughs> I have, I hereby admit my scene of not watching Encanto. Yes, yes, <laughs> wow, I'm genuinely surprised. I thought actually you at least heard of the song, I think so. Who's Bruno? We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> Oh, that one. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I heard of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because I was genuinely surprised because, like, even if you haven't watched the movie, you at least have to heard of the song, at least. Yep. Oh, um, let's see if there are any answers from the audience. The audience, uh, do you know of any songs that you, you would like to share to Miss Judy here? Okay, uh, it appears that we don't really have any. But, well, that's fine. Um, but what about the songs, Judy? Oh, uh, Yellen seems to like the song Clarity Mean. I actually never heard of the song. I should listen to it sometime. Okay, that's nice. Hmm. Uh, I think... Oh, some people actually like K-pop. Hmm. That's actually interesting. I actually some people use K-pop for some sort of animation actually, so that's interesting. Ah, uh, Isaac here says listen to Justin Bieber, uh Despacito. Okay. Right. <laughs> I think we I I have heard of that song before. You, Judy? Yeah, actually, yeah. I heard of that song too. Okay, okay. So Some people a lot of enjoy us. the songs from Madagascar. Like, I, I love to move it, move it. Oh, I was about to say I also never watched Madagascar, so I don't know any songs from there. Ah, hmm. okay. <laughs> I haven't watched a lot of Disney movies. Need to catch up. Oh, uh, there's people who like Candy from By Twice. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a K-pop group as well. I've also never heard of that song. Hamilton. Oh, some people like musicals. That's really interesting. Musicals, like Six, The Heathers. Ah, so I heard of The Heathers, actually. I found their songs also really good. I really like the um Candy Stall. I personally never actually watched the musical nor the movie, but I've heard that I know about the general story and plot. Have you heard of the Heathers? Do you watch musicals, Kaojin? Ah, well, not really. I don't really watch much musicals. But uh, yeah, I mean, I have watched a few before, like um, the the Greatest Showman. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I I like the um the what's that song? Uh, the other side. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and there's also like uh, what what what's what's that song? Okay, I I can't remember the song, it's but like... uh. Rewrite the stars. Oh, yeah, rewrite the stars. Oh yeah, and this is me. Thank you, Shee. Ah. Oh. Yes, thank you, Shee. That that is the song. Uh, but Judy, I'm really interested. Like, uh, you know, how does songs relate back to animation? Could you please enlighten us on that? All right, of course. I see. Those are indeed some good choices. There's a reason why I asked you that question. Because you see, you can also use music to get inspiration, which is what I actually use. I just imagine an action scene based on the music given to me, 
And once I grasp the concept of how the action scene is going to go, I just repeat the song over and over and over and over and over in my head until I refine it. And then I actually put it on paper. This is obviously not the best method for beginners, but listening to music does actually help set the tone and mood that you want for the animation. And it can help you create scenes based on the lyrics of the song. Number two, storyboarding. Next is storyboarding. Now for something as simple as ice blinking, a storyboard is not necessary. However, if you're going to try to start something more complicated, like a moving sequence of backgrounds or an anime fight, a storyboard is going to save your life. I won't be creating a storyboard for this demo, but you can look at my old examples of storyboards I've made in the past. When storyboarding, you can write down some notes and compositions of the scene or use arrows to indicate the direction of the movement. Add what you want, as long as it does the job of communicating how you want your scene to be. Live demo time. All right, I'll be connecting my iPad and giving you guys a live show. So be right back. Ah, well, I'm back again, guys. So as Judy is trying to uh, work on her live demo, set up her live demo, I actually have a question for all of you. Since we are on the topic of animation right now, I'm really interested to know, uh, what is your all-time most favorite animated film? Please type the film name in the chat. Ah, Miss Uma says The Lion King. Yes, of course. Ah, Sylvania. Da 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 da. <laughs> of course, that is a classic. Ah, Miss Kim says Slam Dunk. Oh, oh, Slam Dunk. That's an old one. Slam Dunk. That, does anybody here know Slam Dunk? Uh, Judy, have you heard of Slam Dunk before? Nope, have not. It's about a uh, basketball. It's a basketball anime. Oh, yeah. My sister read the manga. Ah, okay. Okay, that's cool. Uh, she says Demon Slayer. Yes, of course. That, oh, Demon Slayer. Uh, Demon Slayer, very popular now, especially for this generation. Mm -hmm. uh, Yen Lin says Sing. Of course, Sing. Um, I'm still standing. Uh, the, the, that one with the chimpanzee singing. I suppose when I watch Sing. <laughs> I think you really do have to catch out some movies, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's uh, House Moving Castle, that one I have never heard of, Brendan. Okay. Yep. You haven't ah. heard of any Studio Gib Ghibli movies? Sorry? Have you never heard of any Studio Ghibli movies like Spirited Away? Ah, yes. Spirited Away, I've, I have oh. heard of it, but I never really watched it. Uh, Mr. Alex here says uh, Wallace and Gromit, the wrong trousers. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. The, the, the but... man with the dog. Yeah. Yeah, the man with the dog. Yeah, that's why uh, that was fun. And she, I... of course. Sorry, sorry, Judy. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna talk about the episode where they thought the moon they showed that the moon of cheese was cheese. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> cheese. Yes, cheese, of course. Yeah, their favorite their favorite line, cheese. <laughs> and uh, of course, she here has shouted many times, hi hi Is is that how you pronounce it? Hi Q, the oh, Q. Hi Q, <laughs> yes, hi Q, yes, the volleyball one. That's a that's a movie. I thought it was just an anime. I mean, yeah, it's a animated films of sorts a series but yeah i guess you can consider it some people say some people says there's a movie called zoo zumi i have no idea if i'm even pronouncing that correctly um i also have never heard of that but i'm sure it's a great movie yeah. oh and look at tom here and jerry. Uh, tom and uh, yes tom and jerry of course that is a classic i used to watch that a lot Oh, and look at here, guys, ladies and gentlemen, Judy has already uh, set up her live demo. So let's get back on to the main attraction, shall we? Judy, right. enlighten us with your animation magic. All right, I shall. All right, number three, creating plot rough placements. So for this, I'll be, great. I'll be providing you a live demo. Now, before we actually get to creating the rough placements, let's edit a few settings on Procreate. So first, go to Procreate. Um, any, choose a canvas. Any canvas size is fine. So after you go to Canvas, go to this tool icon up here. Oops. So from this tool icon, go to Canvas. Here, you can already see the words Animation Assist. Do enable it. So after here, you go to the settings. So you see in settings, you can see many different sections. So for loop, ping pong, and one shot, these parts here, basically they control how your animation is going to play out in the program. So if I were to choose loop, the 
the animation will play out in a loop. So basically, it will play forwards, then immediately go to the beginning and play forwards in a continuous loop. Ping pong, similar to loop, plays uh, forwards, but instead of going directly to the beginning again, it plays backwards, then forwards, then backwards, then forwards in the continuous loop. One shot means that it just plays once and doesn't play again. So I usually like to choose loop because I personally find loop the most it helps me see the mistakes much better and it can help and I have and I don't and I don't need to have to like constantly keep pressing play to like keep making the animation play so I can see where my animation went wrong. <laughs> Frames per second. Frames per second will control how many how speedy and how many dynamic effects you can do. So if you choose lesser frames like around um, maybe five frames per second, your animation will look very slow and very choppy. And there's not enough frames for you to do dynamic movement. But if you set it to many frames, like around 50, your animation will be very faster. This allows you to create many more effects, like a slow-mo sequence. Though this means that you'll need to draw more and have to make very small changes for each and individual frame in order to take more time in the animation itself. I usually like to set mine to around 10 to 10 to 9 frames as it helps me as it provides me enough frames to create dynamic movement while also allowing me to save time and not torturing me to draw 1000 drawings for one second animation. Onion skin frames. So onion skin frames basically controls the amount of drawings you can see from the previous amount of drawings from the previous frames you can see from this current selected frame. So if I were to set it to around two onion skin frames, from my selected frame, I can still see the other two in the skin frames. Usually I set it to around two to one as it makes the canvas less cluttered and it helps me see where my actual line art is on my selected frame better. And in skin opacity controls the how opaque it looks on your selected canvas. Um, so if you have it around at like, for example, maybe 84%, it will look very opaque. But if you have it around maybe 36%, It'll look very faded. I usually set mine to around 49%. Makes it easier to see. That also faded enough that I do not confuse it with my drawings of the selected frame. Onion skin colors basically controls the onion skin frame's colors. Helps you see where like your actual line art is and where the previous onion skin frame's line art is. I set mine to bright red as it is the most uh, brighter color and easier to define. Now, there are many ways to go about creating the movement. You have two methods. One is the straight ahead method, meaning that from here, let me just draw the eye real quick. So meaning that from here, I just straight away draw the secondary action, which is the eye slowly closing and then the eye closing. But I usually like to do method two, pose by pose. Hold on, let me just clear everything. All right. So pose by pose basically means that instead of drawing the secondary action, I draw the end of each pose. So from this eye open, instead of drawing it slowly closing, I just draw it already closed. Then I draw it open again, which I'm just going to duplicate because I want to. I usually like to do this method, pose by pose, because it helps me keep the consistency of the drawings much easier. And in my personal opinion, makes animating much faster. All right, number four, adding the in-betweens. So if you have done the straight ahead method, I guess this part doesn't really apply to you, but if you are doing the pose, of pose, pose, pose by pose method, this part, this is where you draw the secondary action, which is the eyes slowly closing. So keep in mind you for the pose by pose method, or I guess also the uh, straight ahead method, you have to keep the drawings relatively the same. So Keep the so use the onion skin frame to your advantage and make sure the poses or the eye, the drawing, is relatively the same shape as the previous frame. So there. Now, number four, experiment a little. This is where the principles of animations come to play. So if I were to play this animation now, as you can see, it looks very choppy. How do I fix this? Let's see. Let's use an elongated in between. So, it, an elongated in between basically refers to an in between that is has a 
elongated join. So to do this, I'll pick the end of this, like the of this, I'll pick the end of the pose I over here, and I will duplicate it. So for I'll use the second to last uh, frame for the eye and go to this mouse icon. From this mouse icon, go to freeform and you just hold the top of it and stretch slightly. Now, two things to note. On Procreate, this will lower the quality of your drawing, so try not to stretch too much. And number two, for this case, please do not exaggerate the frame too much. The, the, yeah, do not exaggerate the frame too much either, as the size of the shape still needs to stay relatively the same as the previous frames. So if I were to play the frame right now, it's much more bouncier. Um, I'm going to hold duration on one of the frames also because I find it to be less quick and not as less hectic for the animation. So, hmm. Now, let's play around with the elongated in between. How about I actually make the elongated in between the first and end of the each pose? So let me put it to around maybe three frames per second. Duplicate and then put this frame on the other side. Oops. Boop. Now let's play. As you can see, it gives the animation a much more different effect, and this movement looks more fluid and smooth. Experimenting with the frames and applying the principles of animation can affect the flow of the animated sequence. So explore, have fun with it. And that's it. I hope this tutorial was informative and helpful and helped y'all inform be informed on the process of animation. Now when you look at a an nicely animated sequence in the cartoon or anime, now you'll know the pain and hassle the artist went through. <laughs> that was the longest time I've ever spoken. Now Jin, how do I do? Well um you did absolutely great. I, I really learned a lot on the skills of animation and your live demo was so amazing. So great job, Judy. Although now I do truly understand the pain that animators have to go through. <laughs> I really wonder how their hands are still even attached to their arms. Yeah, most people get scoliosis at age 50. I get it at age 15. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Well, um, do make sure to take some breaks when animating. And same goes to all of you here too. Well, in any case, and in the fashion of podcasting, I hope you have gotten some new inspiration, ideas, and opinions today. And as always, thank you for participating in Fairview's Breakthrough Talk. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. And without further ado, Judy out. Yes, Kelgin out. <laughs> All right, great sharing, Kelgin and Judy. That was truly an inspiring presentation. Dear audience, we would now like to invite you to post your questions in our chat box for our presenter to address them in the upcoming Q&A session. All right, let's see if we have anything. Kelsey, do you have any questions on your side? Or Judy? Um, what is the longest animation I've ever made? Um, once I animated a anime fight sequence, and that's probably the longest one, actually. I think it was around like one minute long. Also, uh, Judy, sorry to interrupt, but uh, could you turn on your cam, please? Oh, sorry. I forgot. All right, Judy, so the longest animation you ever did was a one minute animation, is that right? Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, that animation actually took me around two or four weeks. <laughs> All right, what it... about you, Kelgin? <laughs> uh, yes, I actually have a question here. Uh, from the audience. So this is a question directed to Judy. Well, how much time do you need to draw a character? So let's say, I guess you are designing a new character and then you have to draw it out. How much time uh, does that require? Mm. If you factor in first the design of the character 
and then the inspiration and then also like the sketch if i'm actually like depends on like what like medium i'm also using either if i'm using traditional much longer but if i'm using something like digital i would say it's much faster i would say it takes me around like maybe a few hours uh just to design the character well because i need to find um first and foremost i need to find like designs that are suitable for the character and also i need to make sure that designs are like nice looking and not ugly <laughs> And then I also, like, usually when I design a character, I would like to refine the image. So I would like to make it more clean when I actually draw it. Uh, I have a question on my end, which is what I think about AI-generated animation. Personally, uh, I, I don't know, I feel a bit neutral on the subject. I'm not educated enough to understand enough, enough about AI replacing artists, although it is a sad thought. I do find the fact that our technology, the fact that our technology is able to come this far to actually make robots make stuff for us is quite interesting. Right. Uh, actually, I would also like to answer that. Uh, Judy, could you repeat me the question again? Uh, wait. Uh, what do you think about AI-generated animation? Do I, okay. Right. So I'm going to answer this from the perspective of an audience, like as someone sitting on the cinema seat watching. Okay. But uh, personally, I think it should be accepted in society as a new art form. Um, after all, this art, art truly is in the uh, eye of the beholder, right? They, like what they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So um, as long as the um, AI-generated animation also has like good plot, um, you know, acceptable levels of drawing that is intelligible, that, you know that people can understand and does indeed have a story to it and uh has like good sound and everything then yeah i don't see why it should be uh rejected right i think i think it's, we should accept it as just a sim as just simply a new form of art yeah that's my thoughts on it mm. adding on to what kelgen said i do find it maybe a sort of method to help artists because um animation is a very lengthy process and some people for like, the animation industries, I find it, in my opinion, I find it very, like a very heavy load on the artist. So maybe this could actually help um, carry a bit of the load while the artist can still draw. And so basically they can help alongside the artist. Uh, what is the longest production I have, I had for an animation? Probably like two weeks, three weeks. Um, this was, this is if I have like a lot of free time and I'm not bombarded with outside work. Yeah, Judy, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, how about 3D animation? With the 3D animation software, will it be easier or tougher? Are you able to answer this, Judy? Um, personally, I've never animated 3D stuff before, especially, but uh, I have tried drawing 3D stuff and animating it. It's very hard in my opinion so and i think there's like stuff you have to take in mind like sculpting and stuff like that in within the software so i would say it's a bit harder or maybe at the same level i'm not sure all right presenters uh sorry to run in. we actually have a question from miss jessica the Ooh. question is i want to ask judy what is her favorite animation that she has animated ah uh, um hmm. What is my favorite animation? Probably that one example that was shown on the slide before of the girl like jolting up and looking to the camera. Uh, because it's one of my more recent works and I find it to be the most refined out of all my works so far. Um, I have a question from Miss Lavinia. So do you think AI can produce the same or better quality animation compared to an artist? Uh, what do you think, Judy? Uh, from what I've seen before, uh, from like examples of AI animation, it looks good in my opinion. Like maybe with a few refined, it will look really nice. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's more equal to artists because I definitely I could see some artists being able to recreate what they recreate what they created. 
So I would say they're more equal than they are different. Yeah, I would agree with Julie's point here. Um, but although at some point in time, uh, with the advancement of AI and all of those uh, software and hardware, I would think AI would be able to generate more, I won't say better, but in if you want realism, then AI will be able to generate more realistic uh, animation uh, when compared to like human hand-drawn, uh, even if like even if it's digital hand-drawn. So yeah, because uh, of the advance, we can see this in many in, in like our modern day society as well. Like I don't know if you know about this film, but uh, it's called I think Interstellar. I think there was a black hole scene. Uh, there was a black hole scene uh, where the animators basically uh, used, they, they took a long time, because I forgot how many times, uh, like how long was the duration, but uh, they managed to make a really scientifically accurate black hole scene, right? So everything, well, according to scientists, was very accurate and like what you will see in the uh, universe. So if human beings can do that, I doubt that AI wouldn't be able to do that as well, or maybe even more realistic. But that's in terms of realism. In terms of creativeness and all that stuff, I still believe that human beings will be dominant in that field. After all, uh, we are built of creativeness. Hmm. I do agree with that. Uh, Miranda asked me what got me into animating. I mostly like maybe like cartoon shows I watched as a kid. I used to watch a lot of Tom and Jerry as a kid. And maybe, and I think I found and I also watch a lot of Studio Ghibli movies, and I always found them to be really beautifully made. And I always, I know, you know, I guess a part of me always wanted to create something similar to it. Um, what's my favorite animation? What's my favorite animation? Uh, if you're talking about genre of animation, I actually find them. I do have a soft part for two D animation, at least because of my childhood because I watched a lot of Tom and Jerry and also that's mostly what I do. But yeah, I do find 3D animation to be really interesting. I especially like it if they manage to make 2D animation to look like 3D animation. I find it to be more amazing. Yeah, uh, we have a question from Morena. Mm. So what other platforms can we use to draw and animate other than Procreate? Um. I only know a few drawing programs. I'm not uh I was but flip a clip. Flip a clip is an animation program. And I heard that some people could actually animate such nice smart masterpieces on it. Uh drawing programs. As a kid, I used to use this thing called Sketches. Sketches? It's like a it has a pen icon. Usually I actually find it to be a quite an interesting tool. Uh, to and to draw on because it because it actually has many different like brushes and options to choose from, but unfortunately I feel like most of it it's been uh hidden behind a paywall, so I don't really have good recommendations. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Alex asked, "Do you think increasing the innovation of technology could affect the field of animation?" Um, it, I mean, in my opinion, slightly, because uh. I'll be honest, as I put, I, when I was animating, I kind of realized that most of the work is placed on you because you can be given like, like really good tools, like things that can like already like make, like cut the time to like from two hours to like two minutes. But then you actually have to learn how to use it and know how to use it. So I would say it will help you slightly speed up the process, but most of the talent, not the talent, but most of the work does come from you. Uh, Jessica asked, do you like physical drawing or animation? Uh, I actually like both, but I guess I like physical drawing more because animation does take a lot of time and effort. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have a question from Miss Lavinia again. So do you have mm -hmm. any recommendation for like uh, animation software for beginners? Uh, hmm. Flip a clip. Well, as I said before, Flip a clip is a is only the only animation software that I know that is actually free, and I think has most of their brushes and uh, effects available and not hidden behind a paywall. I might be mistaken on that. <laughs> All right. 
Is there any more questions from the audience? Um, Siran asked me what frame speed I would like to use when I animate. I usually like to use uh, 10 to 9 frames because it gives me enough frames to create dynamic movement, also saving me a lot of time to not draw 1,000 drawings just for a one second movement. Hmm. Yeah, I get, uh, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. How okay. much time does it take for me to animate a scene with one with color? Uh, if I'm drawing something like simple, probably like a day. But then if it like if it's something like um something like like really refined, like a animate scene, an anime scene. The I, I, I can't really say because the last time I tried doing that it was an incomplete project, but it did take me more than a few weeks. Um, all right, I think I ran out of questions. How about you, Kelgen? Yeah, I have no new no questions, new questions already. already. So, so I, I uh, yeah. So I guess uh, yeah, we can call this Q and A sessions. Uh, that we can conclude this Q and A session. Is there any final questions, guys? Nope. All right. All right, Ms. Uma, I think you can carry on. All right. Thank you, Kelgin and Judy. You know, guys, I must say that was quite a talk. Both of you have shown true dedication in continuously developing your amazing talents, and you are acting independently by making your own free choices. You truly are living up to the IB learner profiles of being balanced and courageous. In other words, you are trying new things that will bring in joy in your lives. I hope the audience take a leaf out of their well-written research and actually apply it in their lives as well as you have. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please give a thumbs up if you agree with me. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, dear audiences, it is a fact that students here in Fairview International School learn multiple skills, not just academically, but also enhancing what they are good at to enjoy their learning journeys. Please allow me to brief on some of the information about the organizers for today's talk. Fairview International School is the top IV school in Malaysia. The school has won multiple awards, including International School in Teach, International Award in Teaching and Learning. The five star are a quality assurance title by the Malaysian government. And Fairview is also one of the members of the Council of International Schools. Fairview International School is the only school, ladies and gentlemen, the only school in Malaysia to win a top global IB school three years in a row for the year 2020, 2021, and 2022. At Fairview, we believe our success is a result of our uniqueness, just as Kelgin and Judy portrayed. This is through our IB pedagogies, our future proof at FIS series of events, and the Everyone is a Musician program. Feel free to contact us through the different channels displayed on the screen here, but we would love for you to be a part of our FIS community. That being said, please also like and leave comments for our Fairview International School Facebook, along with Kelgin and Judy's posters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have reached the end of our session. I hope you had an amazing time just as we had. I hope you have learned amazing information as well. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to contact us once again from the channel that was provided. We are more than happy to assist you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, campus leaders. Thank you, Subang Jaya Campus, for hosting this. Kelgin, Judy, you guys are amazing. All right, so brave. Then once again, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend.
All right. Thank you, guys. See you next time on the Breakthrough Talks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate this. Thank support. you. You guys have been wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, on behalf of Subhanja. I would like to request that Kelgin, Judy, and their parents to stay back for a short session. Everybody else, thank you so much, and we'll see you again in our next Back to Talk. Okay. Uh, is Jenny your side, Judy? Oh, she's gone. All right. Thank okay. you. Right. Everyone's left. Has everyone left? Yeah, your dad. I, I need your dad. He's still here. Hi, Mr. Bond. We can't hear.